I'm Edie, I'm 25 and I'm 1 in 10. I was diagnosed with endometriosis when I was 25 um, just last month in July 2022. I have been experiencing symptoms since I was about 15, so that's 10 years now. My mum had heavy periods, my auntie did, all of the women in our family did, so I just thought that was normal um, and nothing much was spoken about it. Um, it wasn't until I started having a lot of pain um, about two years ago that I realised something was quite wrong and yet yeah, that the bleeding just got worse to the point where I would be flooding my clothes and my bed sheets. It was just torrential. I always felt somewhat ashamed of it um, and you know why couldn't I control this bleeding and um, you know why couldn't I just keep it together and all these other women, you know, had much lighter periods than I did. And yeah, I just felt I just had to hide part of myself. I was embarrassed, I didn't really want to talk about it. Um, yeah, I, I kept pretty sheltered. I, I noticed that it started impacting um, my quality of life. I was fatigued constantly, um, brain fog all of the time. Um, it started impacting my relationships. I you know, didn't really want to go out as much. I tired very quickly, just wanted to go home and withdraw. Um, my intimate life struggled, sex became quite painful. Um, yeah, it was very difficult um, and trying to navigate that with a partner as well. For the longest time, I just thought that I was overreacting and crazy. Yeah, and I did withdraw a lot and isolated myself, which did impact my mental health quite a bit. Um, it wasn't really until I started talking more openly about it, I found that it did help. Um, and, you know, friends were supportive and understanding and, you know, quite open to talk about it, which I was quite surprised about. So that really, that did help me see a light. <laughs> I don't know what was holding me back for trying to push for a diagnosis or any sort of direction um, or specialist opinion. When I was growing up, it wasn't really something that was mentioned. It was just kind of like, oh yes, all of the women in our family have heavy, painful periods from time to time. And my aunt, who is on my father's side, she had struggled um, with conceiving and had heavy painful periods her entire life and did have a diagnosis and it wasn't until I got comfortable speaking to her about it that she was like you should really go and see a gynaecologist and you know I have some great recommendations of the people I've seen throughout the years. That's when I um, started pushing for that and because I had private health insurance I got a referral pretty quickly um, and to a great specialist and one of my choosing. Yeah, I, I think there's just been like a cultural taboo that's just kind of stuck since the beginning of time really. You know, we, we needed to start vocalising the issue more, um, just talking about it, being more comfortable with bringing up the topic. Um, it's okay to talk about blood and periods and pain um, and you'll probably find that someone you know is having a similar experience as well. Yeah, I wasn't alone in that. I should talk about it more and I should advocate for myself to get answers. I wish I could tell my younger self to advocate more for herself, um, to push for answers and speak out more. Um, not even just to my GP, but to friends, to my family as well, um, just about what I was going through. And yeah, I think that way, maybe I would have got a diagnosis earlier, but, but probably for me, the biggest endometriosis myth I'd like to dispel is that just because sometimes you may not be in pain doesn't mean that something isn't wrong. Um, you know, I would have some pretty good periods where there was little pain at all and maybe lighter than my previous one. So then, you know, I'd think, oh, 
it's all good, nothing's wrong with me, it's fine, it's all in my head or I just had a bad one last month. Um, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that something's not going on inside.